Welcome to Co-op Mode, round 69. This is the official video game podcast of Secret Friends Unite. I'm your host, Todd Oxtra, joined by my comrade in arms from the Atlantic coast, Mr. Mark Carabin, my Canardian. Just trying not to say nice. Uh, yeah, hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I guess by trying not to say want. it, I just said it. No, it's it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, anyone watching the video just watched my face like completely eat itself to try to try to not be like, hey, hey, nice. Uh, but then I just said it anyway. So anyway, I'm great. How are you? Um, yeah, it's uh, all good. doing very well. Good. Keeping my mind clean as we have this phenomenal numbered episode. Yep. Um, and uh, we did have a guest lined up. Things kind of fell apart with my schedule this week. It's kind of been crazy. I had a concert with my son on Monday, which he's 15. We went to a rock concert. I wore earplugs, Mark. I'm turning into an old man, but man, oh man, it was the loudest concert I've ever been before. And I, I checked myself after I'm like, and I've been to a lot of big concerts back in the day. But yeah, we saw Green Day, Weezer, Fall Out Boy, and The Interrupters. It was fantastic at a baseball That's field, awesome. an outdoor concert. It was wonderful. We had a great time. And Logan said he had a much better time than he expected, which with a 15-year-old kid, that's high praise. That's yeah. That's basically like five star review from a fifteen year old. That's what more can you ask? I'll take it. That's awesome. I'll take it. Then, I know. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it was just one of those things that was delayed from last year. It's the Hella Mega Tour, and I've seen the only one I've seen before was 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 Weezer. I've seen him many many times, but man, oh man, woo! Green Day put on a hell of a show. Man, they know how to entertain, and wow, it takes me back. And, and those guys have been around for almost thirty years, so yeah. that's just crazy crazy oh well yeah um then i had my fantasy football draft on tuesday in person finally reality seems to be kind of coming back to normal fantasy football i'm not the biggest football expert but i enjoy playing it it's just something to really get me involved in the sport you know it's one of those things if there was a fantasy football or fantasy video game like league or something i would love it did i ever show you my my halloween costume from a few years ago fantasy football no. Yeah, I dressed up like a wizard. And uh, <laughs> with a football? So it's a, it a wizard with a football jersey on and a oh, nice. and like the big wizard beard and hat. And Love stuff. it. And then I had a staff with a football on the top of it instead of like a, you know, gemstone or something like that. <sighs> it was uh, fantasy football and nobody Gotta got love it. it. Nobody, nobody got it. it. Nobody. I was, is this, uh, is- I was working in a financial institution I wore to work. Oh. And, uh, and like zero, like once I said, I'm fantasy football, people just kind of gave me like the groan nod kind of thing. Oh like, no. I'd be like so excited. I'm like, uh, yeah. Oh, I would be so, so excited, depressing. Mark, if you were in my office and you did that. I'll send you uh, some pictures. But- so maybe you'll appreciate it like five years after I did it. Your talent is waited, wasted. <laughs> now I don't know. Is, is Canadian football league? Do they have fantasy football too? Probably. I don't okay. Know. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pick which which Rough Rider team you're drafting from, right? That's a, is it the, is exactly. It, yeah. Are you going for the Rough Riders yeah. or the Rough Riders? Rough Riders, yeah. Got a really good chance against the Rough Riders. Exactly, exactly. Never go wrong. Um, well, folks, uh, yeah, so we were going to have a guest. He'll be back next week, so it's going to be a lot of fun, and we're probably going to make it a little bit retro-themed, so get ready for that. Uh, we have got some other more – we've got other guests lined up. So, But in the meantime, Mark, we are excited – uh, because we continue to add content every week. Uh, YouTube is there. We're adding more content there. So please subscribe and watch our videos. Comment. Let us know what you think of those. Uh, don't watch the last episode of Secret Friends Unite. It was Skype video. <laughs> Listen to the podcast. It was much better. Corey was great. Uh, then also on uh, iTunes. Subscribe rate us and we will read your review on the show we want to hear from you guys and those ratings really help us so i think that's enough of the uh uh, i I guess our our stuff until we get the episode and you'll hear all of where you can reach us which is kind of i'm glad we've done that now because it you know it creates more time for us to really focus on the cool stuff yeah, um, exactly. You don't have cool to worry about missing something. Uh, one thing I just I want to thank anyone listening who's followed me on Twitter. I just hit 500 Twitter followers today, which is uh, which is awesome. I, I last week noticed I was kind of close, and uh, it was like 20 something away. And I was like, I think I, I hope I can hit this by like Friday of next week. I gave myself like a little like a week's kind of like let's try to get this because you know I don't expect to grow super fast or anything, but. Um, 
If you're listening and you follow me on Twitter, thank you. 500 is kind of a cool number to hit. I was pretty happy with that today. So uh, that's great. Apparently dad jokes and puns are the way to get there, Mark. (laughs) That's it. It's a lot of Star Wars dad jokes and puns and uh, and some – shit takes and and then video game stuff it's i'm all over the place on twitter but it's uh i I have some fun that's the whole intent of twitter i mean if you take it too seriously oh god twitter becomes a hellstorm so have fun with it folks that's what it's there for and we are on twitter as well so you know you get charlie's hot takes you get my hot takes about the coolest things in geek and and by the way watch the spider-man trailer that's all i gotta say enjoy us that is hot hot holy coolness and i'm glad it's finally out Absolutely. Did you see the stuff? I, I mean, I know you guys will cover this on on Seeker Friends, but like, where where WandaVision had that date marked on the calendar? Oh, like whatever. No, when, when did wow. It drop? Yes, yesterday, the day before, whatever, August twenty third, I think it dropped. August twenty like fourth, I think. And, yeah, and and and, yeah. and that that date had a heart on it in the WandaVision show or something like that. Like, I it, it just wild stuff. I, I don't know if they meant that, but like, if that was planned, like just. Just slow golf kiss. claps all around, Sh- yeah. uh, Kevin Feige. Like yeah. just, but ho- holy crap! Yeah, what a trailer! That's uh, phenomenal. Yes, uh, and lastly, before we get into what we've been playing, um, we are still doing the con- uh, the contest for the Xbox Design Lab for Sean Nias, his daughter and son. Basically, we're designing uh, controllers for them. They will pick the winners. It will be announced. Uh, Sean is donating $100 to each winner for the charity of their choice. We've been getting a lot of entries. We want more. And then hopefully, maybe we'll be announcing it next episode live on the show. So stay tuned for that. But once again, his daughter, Minecraft fan with pink and or, uh, light blue and purple, light blue and, and blue. his son, yeah. Captain America. So there you go, yes. folks. Have fun. Uh, DM myself, Mark, or at Seeker Friends U on Twitter, and that's how you enter. Yeah, I'm very excited. I, I hope some more people uh, submit some controller designs. We've, we've gotten a few cool ones so far, which I'm really excited for for Sean and the crew to see those. And uh, I've yet to unveil both of my designs, so it's it's exciting. I'm, I'm really pumped. Yeah, Logan hasn't even done one yet, so I've got to get on him. I've got to actually try my, my suit. I'm not a design guy, but even I'll try, and I'm sure it'll be yeah. three shades of brown <laughs> so wait for, get ready for that folks come yeah. for that uh but with that um it's what we've been playing so mark i have played the same thing you did um yep. well at least the first one not the mm-hmm. second one so right. why don't we kick it off there sure yeah i honestly haven't been playing much so uh the next you know i'll, I'll talk about a couple of things that that i've kind of been replaying or still dabbling in that we talked about last episode but the big one, the new thing that we've both been playing is uh, Avengers, the War for Wakanda expansion. But with this, there's a big Avengers update. They've changed how some things work. They've changed even some menus, made it a little bit easier. Or if you've been playing since launch, maybe a little bit harder because you're used to where things are. Uh, so so to de- like, for instance, to deconstruct the gear that you pick up, like the lower level gear, I, I usually kept up with that quite well and now i'm just kind of like <clears throat> so okay so i have to go into to mark things and then i mark them all and then you delete them and it it, it seems like it's time saving but to find out where everything is even even in the store to preview some of the costumes on xbox they change that from y to x so i go in the store and i'm like oh cool that's a very neat looking whatever black Panther outfit, I'd, I'd like to see that and kind of spin it around 360. And, uh, and you can't easily like you, well, I mean, you can just as easily as before, but it's a different button. So I keep pressing Y and nothing happens. And I'm like, Oh, right. They've changed this. So it's not what it was, whatever a year ago or because that's what everybody watched. wanted to be changed in Avengers, right, the button like, prompts. And it's not like they remapped anything. It's just like, they just, arbitrarily just change a stupid thing but uh anyway the expansion the real expansion not just the weird little stupid stuff that they changed i'm loving this i think i'm at the end the where i'm at is just balls to the walls tough by myself 
So I might need to start recruiting some people to play this with me because you basically have to be in four or three or four different places at once. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's fun up until this point. It's, I'm loving how Black Panther plays. I don't think it's gonna, he's going to be my main. I'm still really liking Thor and Cap. I kind of bounce between the two of them as my main. Uh, but I love how Black Panther moves. I love some of, some of the, the move set and that kind of stuff. And I, I usually, I don't really fall in love with a character until I really get down into their skill set and their skill tree and really kind of make it my own, how I want to play it. And I found those kind of loadouts for cap and for Thor, maybe I'll, I'll land on one for, for Panther that, that really clicks with me and that'll, that'll really tip me over. But uh, right now, De- definitely not even close to my my least favorite character. I'm really loving it, and I'm loving the story, the the voice acting, the the direction they went with the story, um, the locations. Holy crap, it's fun to play in a jungle. Um, I'm I'm just loving this all over. Short ish kind of story. I don't know if this is the expansion that's going to get everyone back into playing Avengers because I I just don't think the game is there how they want it. It's a great single player experience that lasts a couple of hours. But to, to say that this is going to get a bunch of people playing the multiplayer and diving in and playing those missions over and over and over again, I I still don't think it's there. I don't know. And I don't know if there's anything at this point that can get people in because that portion of the game to me has always and continues to just kind of feel tacked on and forced where everyone just kind of wanted. I I said this last time, just be Spider-Man. Come on. Uh, And, and, and this expansion is leaning more into that direction. They seem to be just kind of accepting the fact that people just want to run through this. People just want to play the story and go, and they've streamlined a lot of things where you can just bounce from mission to mission. And, and there's interesting stuff going on in between missions rather than just being like, okay, well you're back at the helicarrier. And for some reason we start at you off way at the other end of the helicarrier. So you have to run to the other end of the helicarrier to start a war table mission again. At least this one, they're pretty much like, you know, talk to this person, do this, do that, get a little story exposition and then go on. Um, so I'm, I'm loving it so far, but I, I don't know if it's going to be something I stick with long run too much longer after I'm done. Although I have been playing it a little bit before this expansion came out to kind of get ready and it, it's got its claws in me a bit, but, uh, I don't know. What do you think? It's a, it's an, it's, they're in an interesting position because, you know, it's it's basically been almost a year since this game launched. And we had heard that this game is just struggling to even get even on what it cost and how they made it. Yeah. A lot of things were delayed because of COVID. Totally understand it. Um, the model is interesting because it's essentially all the content is free and only the cosmetics are pay. Mm-hmm. The... the um, I guess all of the things you have to earn to spend on upgrades and things is so confusing to me. I don't even try to get into it. I just, I just, if I find something, I see if it's better, I equip it, I move on and that's perfectly yeah. fine. Um, and, and I think that's, that's, you know, works well enough. Um, and I have played the Hawkeye, both Hawkeye missions did the campaign. And so, yes, I am not as far as you though on black Panther, okay. but he is a lot of fun to play. He's a melee character, but he's very agile, very fast. Um, and the the having being in Wakanda in a jungle is a is a it's it's just a breath of fresh air, no pun intended, because it's not I'm in Utah in a canyon again, mm-hmm. or I'm not um, in, I guess, and I don't even think I've spent much time in the city, which is one of the main levels you're in a city um, in the main game. But the, even it seemed like I was never there. I was always in brown landscapes, whether mm-hmm. it was the future or just prime. So I'm glad we finally got this, which is what they needed. And we did get some new enemy classes with the claw squad or whatever we're calling them. Uh, and, I don't know how different they are really from aim uh, enemies, but at least it's nice to see some different looking enemies. And uh, the, the voice acting is, were is fantastic. Choice. Uh, they yeah. leaned heavily into the spiders, and I like. I I don't 
I don't know where that kind of comes in. Like, is, is that a thing in comics or something? Like, is it like, does no. Black Panther regularly fight spider drones or something? Or there's just something they, and there's like big ones Mark, and small ones. And if you've as big never as learned head, anything, so, spiders are the mortal enemy of Panthers. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's such a weird, and they're sure. small. So they're kind of hard to target sometimes yeah. and realize that that's what you need to target. It's, it's a weird, especially when choice. you have a melee character, right? And then it's like, they're little, so almost you'd want somebody that actually could like shoot from afar. That would be easier to manage that. I find it so yeah, it seems to, like a foil aim when you're trying to throw uh, the, the Panther daggers, it's harder to aim yeah. at the spider. So I keep hitting other things and it's like, okay, fine. I'll come over and kick you off a ledge. Let's go. Uh, but then that's, yeah, it's, it's such a weird design enemy choice, but yeah, I, I am liking that. It's not just aim bots over and over and over again repeatedly, but, uh, Weird choice with the spider droids. Yeah, I mean, you do. And then you do get like a mini boss, which is kind of nice. I don't know if if there are others yet. I haven't encountered any um, crossbones showing up is kind of cool, yeah, um, which is why I think the game has been lacking is just kind of some of those iconic villains. They, yeah. they can just be mid tier, C tier, D tier. I don't care. Show have like the shocker show up. I don't care. You know, just something fun. And I'm hoping yep. they do more of that. And maybe they will. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that because you, you don't need every, I mean, the, the MCU has a bad habit of killing off villains and you don't need to do this in this game. You can have a villain escape or do something else with the villain that they can come back later or whatever, or just show up for a quick little like, ha ha ha, I'm going to do this and distract you from the big bill or whatever. It's, it's, it's so much fun to see those kind of characters rather than a hundred thousand spider bots that it's, it's, it is cool when they pop up. And I, I hope, like you said, that they, they do it more. That'd be neat. Yeah. I mean, Marvel has Charlie and I always go back to this. Marvel has, unlimited amount of uh just iconic looking but you know also ran villains that you know they 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 produced in the 80s and you see him on the cover like who's that dude don't know he looks cool let's see what he does so it just is weird it's like the economy it's like either it costs too much to develop someone or they feel like oh we need to save them for future days and i'm thinking at this point you guys need to really ramp up the content because Mm -hmm. that's the only thing keeping people coming back to buy those ten dollar costumes um and at this point I really don't think they did enough to, I mean, it's great to have this content, but the actual, what you need to keep doing to keep people coming back. I, I feel like they did nothing to change that. They didn't change my opinion on uh, squatting up with people to do the same thing over and over and over again and do it, to shoot a guy in the head 85 times to finally get something decent. Um, I, I think this game is, is going to have to go free to play ultimately and then find another model uh, which mm-hmm. maybe is just charged for expansions or something. I just don't know how they do that. Well, considering they say everything's going like to be free. Their, their DLC is so expensive right now. And they've even, I mean, they've, they've been doing sales and cutting the cost of, of DLC characters, but it's still, uh, I was, I was looking at, there is a bundle right now, actually, that, that I think is great value. If you haven't purchased the, these costumes already, I think it's 20 bucks in the U S for uh for this uh mcu bundle so it comes with a couple of the mcu characters and a couple of really cool designs um it's like 20 bucks and i i factored the cost out even on sale those and i think it's a skin for every character minus black panther which of course why wouldn't you throw in a black panther skin to celebrate a new character being released yeah dummies but uh, oh no they did they had one for free though did they you did have see one that? for free. There's, there's one did, for free. Yes, I did, yeah. I did get that one for free, yeah. which I, yeah. I really like. I love the the cape. The cape. Um, yeah. But I, I really thought they'd they'd you know feature all of the characters in this expansion. Um, so if you haven't purchased the game yet, this is kind of now the the new premium version of the game. But you can also just buy the character pack for the standard game for twenty bucks. Um, but like I said, I I priced it out. If you were to buy all of them it's something like 70 or 80 bucks or something or like inching closer to 90 Canadian or some crazy crap like that. So great value at 20, but like just shows that the individual skins are wildly expensive for a game that's already full priced and already 
kind of floundering like from the gate. And, and yeah. I don't think this is the expansion that's going to convince people to drop $90 on a couple of skins to make your characters look like they do in the MCU. Uh, and that's coming from someone who's already dropped definitely not $90, but a little bit on MCU Thor and cap mm-hmm. to make them look like they did an end game. Cause I love those skins, but it, yeah, I just, I, I just don't know. I don't know what their end game is. Pardon the pun. Uh, Thanos showing up and doing a dance, and they bring <laughs> on uh, stars and make it a, a, a make it a, a, a battle royale game. I really think they could go free to play though, because if it, if the game was oh, free, they, I think they could too. If the game was free, even if the expansions continued to be free, or if you paid a little premium price, let's let's say twenty bucks or thirty bucks for an expansion pass where you got all of them or a season or something like that. But I I really think that if you got this game for free, the the same way that people look at Fortnite or most of these battle Royale games, it's like, well, I got the game for free. So I'm going to go put some money into the skins. If I really like this game, if I'm playing and having a good time with my friends, I don't mind dropping 20 bucks on a couple of skins here and there. But yeah, right now I think they need to change their strategy. But I am very much enjoying War for Wakanda. So if you haven't checked it out, don't don't because I don't think they're going free to play anytime soon. So just just go check it out. Or uh, I, I mean, I got a copy of uh, the Avengers game from GameFly for ten bucks. Yeah. Oh yeah. I it's, mean, it's, it's been going on. There's sale. ways to get it cheap. Me, going yeah. on sale like crazy. Anyway, so I, I might as well just finish off what I what else I've been playing because it is not much new. I've been playing Pick Two-E still because it's a nice, fun, relaxing puzzle game. And uh, if you haven't checked that out, check it out on Switch from our friends at a Tui. And uh, I've been playing uh, more Pokemon Unite. I'm I'm hooked on that stupid little game that I never thought I'd enjoy. And they they are adding Blastoise. I just read that today. Uh, I think that's September 1st, I want to say. So if you're playing Pokemon Unite, add me as a friend. I have not been playing games much the past week. Uh, I've just been busy and and trying to fight something off. I went to bed really early yesterday, but I'm feeling okay today. Um, so I'm hoping I, I get to play more games. But War for Wakanda has really taken up most of my time, aside from like jumping in and playing like a match or two of Pokemon and like a couple of puzzles on uh, Pictui. So, uh, so that's it for me, really. So Todd, what else have you been playing? Yeah, so I have been playing all over the place. I've been playing some demos, some things, but I I just wanted to clue on this. There is a game that I am reviewing that I needed to give a little bit more time. So I'll talk about that game next episode. I I just didn't feel like I gave it enough of my time to really give it a real review uh, because I want to give, you know, the publisher uh, for thanking them for giving me the code, for giving it my attention, and I give them a fair shake. So with that, though, 12 minutes uh, came to Game Pass, and I think it's also just on Steam if you want to buy it there, or you can buy it on Xbox as well. Uh, This is a game uh, from Annapurna, and this studio essentially created a time paradox click and point adventure game. Um, The game is from an overhead perspective. It's got a very minimalistic art style, uh, but the notable thing is is the voice talent. It yeah. is Willem Dafoe. Uh, it is James McAvoy, Daisy Ridley, and I think that's it. There's really only three characters in this game, it's and really the uh, the interesting part about this game is you have 12 minutes, and then the game resets. And it's all about a murder mystery or a mystery, kind of like a, a detective noir type of film. But it's about this man who shows up at his apartment and this gentleman who says he's a cop shows up and bad things happen. I don't want to give too much away if you are going to play the game, but essentially it it just resets. And every time you, it resets, you have the opportunity to change variables of what you did. So like I said, it's click and point, which just means if you're old school, you just look at the environment, see what you can interact with and see what you then can then uh, either combine or use in the different piece of the environment. And the game and the level is very small. You're in a small apartment. There's a closet. It's a kind of a efficiency apartment. So your, your kitchen and your living room, uh, dining room, it's one room. There's a bathroom, 
and there's a bedroom. So that's your area to work in. You can close doors, you can turn on faucets, you can do things like that, you can open the fridge. So, and then you can just look at things, try things, and it tells you, yep, that's it or it's not. Um, so with that, I did finish the game, and there is a true ending. The game has a great concept, but my I struggled with this game. And, and I'm hearing a lot of people say the same thing that this game has great um, ambitions to be more than it is, but it struggles because of its gameplay. And it is funny because the concept of repeating what you do isn't unique in video games. Video games are all about that. You die and you repeat again. So for me, it actually doesn't feel like it's that unique for the medium. Right. It's unique in if it was in a different medium comic uh-huh. book tv or something like that or a movie and you've seen that a couple times with uh, what is it um what live di- live die repeat the tom right. cruise yeah. movie Groundhog looper's day. kind of like that too groundhog's day so but there's always more opportunities to do something different with that so yeah. um this game also struggled great voice talent but i think everybody had maybe about i don't know the, the amount of dialogue was very limited so you heard them say the same thing over and over and over again for 90% of the game because you spend most of your time doing the same things over and over and over again before you get something new to try and figure out what's next. And this game has video game logic. I sometimes call it Nintendo logic where it's like, I would have never picked to do that. And that was a problem with old click and point games like the King's Quest games. It's like, whoever thought you'd do that? I'm like, right. no, it's like, and one object was even out of your viewpoint and I struggled, and it was funny because I actually had a game Sherpa for this game, Mark. Chris, our buddy Chris from oh, One Hour, okay. One Decision. Awesome. Yep. When I mentioned I was playing it, he said, let's take this offline, and I'll, you can ask me questions. So we played it back and forth, and I was like, oh, my God. And it's like, and I'm like, I'm stuck at this point. And he was trying to be vague, so he wasn't you know, directly walking me through it. But mm. it got to a point where I'm like, I did have to go to a walkthrough because I'm like, I'm not enjoying myself anymore. I feel like I've done everything, tried it. And I'm like, and like with the game repeating itself after 12 minutes, because you do run out of time and it repeats itself. Um, yeah. So the game probably, if you play it through, I think maybe took me four to five hours. And right. I will say this, this is an M night Shyamalan plot because okay. <laughs> at the very end, I'm like, so I need to go back and see what really happened, all these things, because there's a lot of leaps of faith in this. And I'm just like, okay. wow. So uh, check it out. There's some people that love this game, but I, I don't know. I, I think you have to really want to love this game more so than it was, because I can't say the voice acting was that incredible. I didn't even realize it was Daisy Ridley. And not not saying because it didn't sound like her, because I'm like, it wasn't impressive. It was right. just phoning in. And that's the problem with, with, with real actors. And I feel like what if, if you've been watching what if mm-hmm. voice actors that do things like that, I think are so much better than regular actors when it comes to animated, because yeah. I just think they, it's just not their medium. Um, yeah, so in this instance, I'm like, actor, but I, I've yeah. noticed some in, in what if it's like, okay, yeah, they got the real actor back, but like that dude or that woman or that person is like, just not used to being in a recording studio like that is either a stage or film actor let them loose let them chew up some scenery like just do not put that person in a booth not for them no or they're bored or they don't take it serious or there's not used to a voice director yeah exactly yeah Yeah. or or it's it's just like yeah it's hit or miss for sure yeah so check it out but yeah and, and it's funny i've been having this feeling with game pass this year they had this great ambition to have all these games that are like, oh, they're going to be so impressive. And most of them have just been kind of like, eh, okay, Game Pass games. Kind of like, oh, it's a movie on Netflix. I mean, it kind of feels like none of them. Gaming this year, though, like it, there, it, there was some stuff that I saw been, out of, out of uh, and I, I, we'll, we'll get to this later, but I didn't watch like most of the Gamescom stuff today because I was too busy, but like I saw some stuff coming out of it, like Nintendo got some, or, or th- there was some kind of a award category for Nintendo. There was like two games in it. And it was just people were like, why? Why is that even a thing? Why was there why even awards for these? Anytime? I don't right. know. How, 
how are they even awards for this? Because like, I think, and I would say Halo Infinite won an award. I'm like, but how, what did people even play? Halo is not even, <laughs> nobody's even touched the game. So I'm like, that was Unless so hard. A, but like, yeah, I just, a, a future hype award or something. And, uh, <sighs> you know, yeah. Are, the Mountain Dew, like, uh, Jeff Keeley, yeah. Hideo Kojima <laughs> right? award. Like, yeah. Just, just, I, yeah. So, I mean, I, I just, to me, yeah, that's, that's just kind of uh, gaming this year, really. Yeah, it, it did get a lot of hype, though. I think people were like, oh, this is going to be the biggest thing in the world. I think that did not help this game. Kind of like, uh, was it No Man's Sky? Same thing with that game. Little game, hyped up. And ultimately, that's a lot of pressure on a small studio. So, mm-hmm. um, But yeah, try it out. But it is nothing more than, I would say, a small game that is trying some unique things. And and I, I would love to see what they do next, if they can tweak the gameplay um, and they can really understand the medium a little bit better and what unique things gaming brings to the table versus just, I want to tell this unique story. And So, maybe game so with, with the story and with the gameplay loop, you said you played it with Chris or kind of a little bit yeah i stopped because we were we were just texting each other when i played it yeah so we're basically if i played it right now if i stopped and just went and played it would i have the same playthrough ish that you did or can i go in completely different paths if i notice something in the room before you like after like could this game be it sounds like on a, on a much smaller scale and, and a much more limited scale, but could we have those breath of the wild moments where I leave the plateau and I go West and you leave the plateau and you go East and someone else leaves it and they go North and we all run into a whole bunch of different shit and we get to the same place at the end, but the journey there is wildly different. Like, is that where this game could find appeal where if if I I play it and I'm talking to you and I'm like, Oh man, the first thing I did was like try to open the fridge and then pop the toaster and it scared this person. And then a bird flew in and this happened and it's like, or like, or would it just be like, no, yeah, a, B and C happened. And for you, a, B and C happened and we got to D and that was it. Like what is, is there any kind of fun in, that water cooler moment or is this just kind of like they tried something and it kind of went no the game is very much a linear experience okay, and it's right. just trying to get there it's kind of like right. trial it, it, but the, the the options to try some things are very limited now there i would say there's one thing you could try that like i didn't think about and i read about i'm like okay that's kind of cool right. but there just weren't a lot of those there's maybe i would say like you can just sometimes you can just do nothing in the game by doing nothing, it will create a ending. So that is that type of experience. But like I said, you run out of those pretty quickly. And it's the frustration is like, I'm just stumped and I don't know what to do. And I'm not having any fun anymore because I've touched everything and I've heard the same line of dialogue over and again. So I'm like, it takes the whimsy away. Now, if they could do something like that and add more options thing. But like I said, you've got essentially two rooms, three, you know, call the closet. If you want to call the closet a room. That's a room, but there's like one thing you can touch and one thing you can do. That's it. All right. So, but yeah, gotcha. I, I think it's worth trying. I think you and I think you and Loren, I think could have a good time because you could go back and forth oh, and try it. So I think that yeah. would definitely be something I would say, try it together because that could be a much better experience, but you also All might right. be like yelling at each other at the end and saying, <laughs> what the hell? And why is this happening? So, and it could cool. make some unique experiences, uh, conversations after too. Interesting. All right. I did download it. So I, I hope that yeah. I will. It, it's going to be a busy week and we have a family reunion going on. So if I get to some gaming, but hopefully by the next episode, I'll have some gaming time and, and get to this and, and we'll see what I think. Um, next, though, I played a demo of a game that I think we saw uh, maybe in an Xbox, like they're, they're real at the I think it was their July E3 experience. I think this is one of those like indie games that kind of really stood out. It's called Rainbow Billy, The Curse of the Leviathan. There's a demo on Steam right now, and this game is the best way to explain it. It is looks like Cuphead. It's kind of an action-adventure game with some platforming, and it has turn-based combat, like turn-based oh, RPG. Yes. I'm like looking up images for this right now because it wasn't ringing a bell. But it's a, it's a, it, 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 the art like, style yeah. is adorable. It looks like mm-hmm. Cuphead. I mean, there's nothing else to say. And it's kind of interesting because there's an adventure here. The interesting part is there's actually 
I and I, I thought it was something else. I thought it was also like in parentheses, kind of at the end of the name, your true colors, because that's truly what this game is. The converse, the, the, the combat's conversation, which is weird. You'd say it's, you meet these monsters or uh, potential companions, but you have to talk to them and you either talk or listen to them. They all have issues, which is so weird. Like they have, they have, they have like parent issues. Uh, they have confidence issues, all of these things, and you talk to them. When you open up the door with your conversation, you then basically break down their barriers or their defenses. So take issue with the narrative leads to itself. And you have to figure out what the best way to, to each person. Is it talking or just listening? Hmm. Is it being bold in your conversation or res- reserved? It's a lot of that. Um, but it's turn-based. So if you make the wrong decision, you get attacked as well. Um, but you do get like a companion you earn, or you when you when they join you, they have special abilities as well that help you along the way. Um, and there's like little missions you go on. They like it's like fetch quests and things like that too. Um, you ride a boat around to go to different areas and unlock this area to bring color back in the world. Um, and I got stuck, so I, I don't know why I got stuck. I'm like, I tried every conversation combination. I'm like getting frustrated. So, but I really liked what it was. Now, I don't know if that combat will get old after a while. Mm. Um, and I think a game like this would be perfect for more like an action platformer, like a, almost like a Mario type of game would be a lot of fun, but I just love the art style and aesthetic. And I want to see more people do things with this type of art style. Cause I think it's fantastic. And it's well thought out game, so I think it, it's it's going to be somebody's favorite game of the year. Cool. And I think it's it's definitely family friendly. I think a, a lot of kids would love it because maybe it helps them with their confidence or works those issues. So it's just really unique, and I just was really pleased with the game. And I'm like, very cool, good That's job. Awesome. Um, and then lastly, Death Store. Now this is the game I actually bought, Mark, on Xbox, which is just like. Whoa. I never buy things on Xbox no. because Game Pass is there. It's my Game Pass box. <laughs> and and if something comes to Xbox and it's an exclusive, I'm like, why isn't that on Game Pass? So, which is just a weird thing. It's like a weird, like, mindset, right? Because I think people say, oh, Xbox, you don't need to buy games. Well, they got an exclusive that's highly regarded. Mm-hmm. That's 20 bucks that you can't get for free. So I did buy this game. Um, and I think I had a Microsoft bing rewards card i put towards it so um but this game is heavily lauded it's it's like a zelda like i guess you'd say Mm -hmm. because it is you explore the world the combat is with a sword and you also have a uh uh, an arrow attack as well um it's all about this crow that has to go get souls essentially and you collect them and then you can unlock things and that's your mission um the game is hard but it's not like a souls like well it's i guess it's more like a souls souls like than a roguelike so hard and not a lot of checkpoints okay and no and no map so and death's door is you enter doors uh and that's where you start over again in a mission in or in a map so it's a beautiful game. It's made by a small team. Uh, aesthetically, the music is beautiful. Um, I'm enjoying it, but I have very a few nits to pick that make it not. I it makes me try to figure out why this is game of the year. Um, and I know some people like like uh, Metroid likes and things like that. Zelda likes, what you're gonna call it. The game has some interesting uh, gameplay in regards to feel so when you're mark when you're standing and 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 hitting your sword back and forth do you really want to be moving forward like if you're standing Mm. and you're just hitting the button do you like to move forward not not always no i like to be able to control precisely when i have combat yeah this game you start moving forward so i felt kept like running into things and it caused my death and i'm like why did they choose that yeah. I, I mean it's is it is it momentum for a character like saying if you move it's going to move you forward so that annoyed me and i'm like i don't like that and it's like i don't think i'm going to like it a lot more maybe i'll get better at it but that was just something that when it's a game that's that hard 
and it leads to to me frustration and errors yeah i'm like i don't think that's my mistake i feel like that's a com that's a design decision somebody made for some reason that i just don't get mm -hmm. yeah well, it, it, i mean if if there is momentum in a game that when you swing you you are bringing that momentum forward then you would assume that the level design would accommodate that so as soon as you say that there's uh, momentum in your swings, but you're falling off of ledges, you're falling off of stages, like, oh, that's just um, poor level. To, unless you're just like, for some reason, sticking close to ledges, with I high, which I highly doubt. But Well, it was uh, really the combat. It was the yeah, combat where I'm right. near an enemy, and if you touch them, you get injured. Mm. So that's the problem, right? So it's like, if I'm this far away from you, but every time I swing my sword, I get that much closer to you, and then I hit you and I get damage right. and you don't get a lot of health in this game. So it was just like, what am I missing? Mm. Maybe there's something there that I'm just doing wrong that I need to learn because this game I think has a lot of potential for me, but the other problem I, I, I don't like, there's no map. So you go through and then you have to repeat it. Enemies respawn after you die, you come back and go through it again. But I would say there's nothing remarkable about a level that makes you remember where things were at. And it's not like a one linear piece. There's places you can go and you have to explore like a Zelda game. Right. So, and just imagine if there was a Zelda game with no map, right? I mean, you'd be like, but there, there's a lot of memorable things in a dungeon, like in a Zelda yeah. dungeon. Remember, if there was no map in a Zelda dungeon, yeah. that would get really frustrating after. Like, tough. where do I go? And I got to run into these enemies again. And I, so... God, I, I, I'm glad I had Rainbow Billy this week because I sound like a negative Nancy, but I will say, so I think this game is for a lot of people. And as you hear, a lot of people love this game and they, it's like one of the highest reviewed games of the year. So, um, who knows, maybe Logan will play it and love it and tell me dad, I'm dumb. So, um, but I'll, I'll leave it there. Check out Death Store if you're interested in a, a difficult game with a lot of charm and really pretty. Uh, but lastly, I played like two minutes of Psychonauts 2 launched. Oh, awesome. I am so excited for this game. It's beautiful. I tried to play the first game again, but man, it's it's an old game. That the, the mechanics just just I'm, I'm struggling with mechanics. This game is beautiful. I cannot wait to play it more. I, I really this is probably going to be the game I focus on the next two, three, four weeks. So excited for it. Awesome. Yeah. Another game that I, I set to download from my phone, but I haven't checked out my Xbox. So uh, very excited to jump into Psychonauts 2. Well, talk about what we played, but now what we actually watched in the news this week, it's Gamescom week. This is the biggest game Whoa. show in Europe. Uh, it's still not with people but it is a presentation. Um, Xbox kicked it off with their Xbox... I don't know what we called this thing. It's the Xbox Gamescom stream uh, that happened the day before. And there was a lot of people thinking, oh, this is going to be a big one. And then uh, Aaron Greenberg said, don't get yourself hyped up. It's going to be updates to games you know are coming. Mm-hmm. But do you think, Mark, and we're going to talk about this in actually the topic of the show, expectations and hype. So do you think people really kept their expectations in check? Oh, of course. Everyone on the internet was fully rational and behaved very, very well. You know what, Mark? I'd like to say that's true, but people <laughs> really wanted the latest and greatest. They wanted big surprises. Ultimately, I think they wanted Halo information. But oh, yes. We'll get to that. Yeah. Um, so uh, essentially, this was a video uh, showcase with a couple of hosts with some guests there. And essentially, all they did was introduce trailers and then talk to people that had something to do with the game. Paris Lilly, and I remember me trying to remember the the, the woman uh, that's involved, and she does a lot of Xbox events. And both great people, great questions, great interactions with people they were talking to. But man, it was long. Mm. And I think it just didn't deliver what people were wanting. Yeah, we got updates, but there weren't a lot of surprises. Um, I think the biggest surprise to this was Xbox Cloud Gaming, meaning we are going to be able to use cloud gaming on your Xbox console. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a native app like anything else on Xbox. And it's going to be the same. And I'm not sure if there'll be 
additional features beyond what you can already do on your mobile device or PC uh, mobile browser. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are excited about this because this is the gateway for owning an Xbox One and playing uh, your Game Pass games in the future because we know that support is ending. Um, And then another benefit of this is not having to download games and playing them right away. No patches, Mm -hmm. no uh, wait for uh, things to install, and you have to worry about your storage space. Um, and so you're only limited by your uh, bandwidth, essentially. Um, yeah, that's that's the really exciting thing for me, especially as, as someone who, I, I've said this before on the show, I go through the Game Pass like weekly, monthly quests and that kind of stuff. And if there's something that says, play this game or do this in this game, then that's usually my gateway of trying things out. And sometimes I stick with the game and other times I just jump in for five minutes to do what they want me to do to get my 25 or a hundred points for that week and, and complete some more of my quests and, and earn free stuff. And, uh, to not have to download some of those games fully and just be able to like quickly start up. I've done that from my phone a few times and just said like, you know what? Screw it. I am not downloading this game, especially if touch controls are enabled and I don't have to like sync a controller to my phone. Like hundred percent. So this, even if this only opens up that option for me, like I'm, I'm still a little bit hyped for that, but like if this actually really works well and I get the choice between downloading some games and playing them natively or just hopping right in, like that's, that's a game changer for sure. Yeah. I think this is the gateway to get game pass, uh, streaming on your TV. Uh, this is phase one. Phase two, I think this is just to you know prove positive people have it there. And I think at CES is when we see TVs with the native app. We see maybe Roku saying, yep, we've signed a deal. All of the different fire stick, maybe, I don't know, Apple TV. I don't know. Like, they don't play together, do they? <laughs> they don't like each other. No. So I'm really, we'll, we'll I'm really hoping Apple changes their tune, but uh, I think it might – especially in the TV space, it might, it might, um, force them if everyone else, like you said, the fire TV Roku is built into so many TVs right now. Uh, if, if you start building cloud gaming into TVs and even bundling some with a controller, I can see right now, like just maybe not this year, but next year's like black Friday sales of buy this, you know, 55 inch series blank TCL with an Xbox controller and it's it's got Roku built in and you get a, a month or three months of Game Pass like it's going to put some pressure on for Apple to be like oh well, we we make TV stuff too we we can play um but it, it, yeah that that kind of stuff is super exciting Absolutely. And and I think we'll see a third tier of Game Pass where it's just Game Pass streaming and it's five bucks. Yeah. And I think because I because I, I think it's a lot to ask somebody to pay 15 bucks a month for streaming only. And mm-hmm. and 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 because a lot of people just don't want to buy a console. So this is one way you can get it there. And by the way, then you can get it on your phone too, and you can get it on your tablet and this. And it's five bucks a month, and that's five bucks a month you wouldn't get from somebody at all. So that five bucks, that's how they get it to two billion screens. It's it's really the Trojan horse. Very cool. Um, I, I love this. I think the Xbox is so forth thinking, and um, and they'll find some. And, and based on their marketing, they'll do a great job marketing it yeah. too. So, yeah. kudos to Xbox for that. Uh, then we got Forza Horizon Five. It's coming. I mean, <laughs> if I don't know what else you needed to know, but to but what's cool is you're gonna get a cool new controller that is kind of like Jackson Pollock with a little see through element yep. that's that see through yellow color, yep. so you can see inside. Which I love that see through aesthetic. Um, it's there too. Um, Xbox is putting out so many different controllers. Xbox you can design just, your own, Mark, as you said. Uh, they yeah, ju- they just keep killing it. And like every time I see a controller that I want or like, they come out with a new one the next week. That's like. No, maybe I want that one. So like right now I want a design lab controller, but I can't decide because I've designed like 27 of the damn things and I want all of them. So I can't decide which one to order. Um, and, and Loren wants a controller too. So I need to get essentially two controllers by the end of the day. And, and 
and pick just two because well, we don't really need any more than that because I still have Xbox One controllers lying around. But you know, we've, we've kind of justified this getting two controllers because my black one uh, broke that came with the Xbox Series X. Um, so right now I'm using an Xbox One controller, but uh, it was sold on the what's it called the Aqua Blue one with the the swirly whirly. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the new one that's grips. got like it's got like grips on the back, yeah, so and that's like yeah. seventy bucks. Yeah, and, it's not crazy. She, she yeah. loved that one, and then I showed her the Horizon one, and she loved that one, and then I saw the Halo one today, and I'm like, maybe I don't need a design lab because that's dope AF. Um, like I, I just I just. Xbox is just killing it so much with controllers. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I gotta, yeah. It, it's, oh, man. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about controllers in a second. Uh, then we got Crusaders Kings 3. That's coming, I believe, to Game Pass. It's it's a PC game. A lot of people love it. I It's not for me. <laughs> uh, Wasteland 3 is getting new content uh, for free. It's coming to Game Pass if you really like that game. It's a unique game. It's kind of like a, one of those crpg type of games where you got people it's got a little bit of tactical combat as well uh but people really enjoy that game uh state of k2 got some new content coming as well so Mm -hmm. if you like that type of survival community building type of zombie games is more to come there uh they still have state of k3 coming so this is maybe a way to get people engaged with that franchise until the new one comes out mm-hmm. uh sea of thieves has something new mark i don't know yeah, there's, there's always event something going on. Sea of i actually did see part okay. of this because i follow so much sea of thieves stuff uh so there's an event there's a borderlands uh ship i want to call it skins but I, I don't know ship theme that you can kind of unlock by uh by doing stuff in the event so yeah very exciting stuff sea of thieves just keeps adding and just keeps growing and uh it's it's exciting Absolutely. Uh, Flight Simulator got some more content coming. The Reno Air Races, which basically it's just one of those like it's almost like an air show Mm -hmm. where they have a a, a basically a it's it's like the Red Bull competition kind of stuff. Yeah. So if you if you are into that, it's 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 coming Mm -hmm. and that's what they're going to do. They're going to keep coming. We obviously are getting that Top Gun uh, content coming as well. Uh, Psychonaut 2, just they're showing the game. They want people to play it. If you missed the first game, which most people did, it's there. uh, yeah, and we Dying Light got a new trailer. That game is coming in December. Um, I didn't love the first Dying Light because I didn't really love the first person ma- uh, like that that traversal. Yeah, but this one looks cool too. It's not coming to Game Pass, but it's going to be a cool game. Very cool. Yeah, so it's like the precursor to, to Gamescom. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just want to say, my son would kill me if I didn't announce this. Destiny Two had a huge announcement about their new expansion, Mm -hmm. their new season. Logan is just a big Destiny 2 junkie. He's actually talked me into playing Destiny, getting back into that game. They announced, like, cross-play is now live in Destiny 2, which is awesome. No PC Game Pass, though. But no, there's still no Destiny Two is still not on PC Game Pass, so we're gonna have to probably get buy it on PC so Logan can play it and I can play it because uh, we only have one TV to share the console. So, yeah. but yeah, he's excited about that. So if you're interested in that, uh, I would say check out Tower Casuals with Corey and Josh over at Boss Rush Games. Yeah, they got you covered. Uh, Go check those another, guys out. I don't know if it was part of this or part of uh, another thing. The Gunk. We got a new trailer for that that I saw. Uh, was that part of oh, this show? Oh yes. Or was that was that separate? Because that's an Xbox Good exclusive question. game, I, but uh, yeah, the gunk looks awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, gunk is going to, and that was the funny part, because it was like, originally said it was like coming out in September. I'm like, but they haven't shown anything. Game. It's coming out December now, I believe. Okay, um, sure. And it's part of Game Pass, and it is, uh, it, it, it looks cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know much about the game still, but there was a trailer that showed more about it. So the gunk, uh, and it's unlike something they've ever made before. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad they're trying new things. Now the main meat of Gamescom uh, was today. I just finished watching all of the trailers, all of the weirdness. Um, a very weird Lindsay Sterling performance where she played music from <laughs> the new Tales game, which I know she's a good performer is, and yeah. plays fantastic, but this felt like it was just she was like, violin syncing because she was doing a weird dance around and i'm like that doesn't even look live yeah she she sometimes can can go a little uh theatrical and and it's 
I mean, if she's playing while doing all that kind of stuff, but I, I, I watched some of her I don't, videos and I stuff. I don't and think it's like, if she was – it sounded pre-recorded. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she, she's a hell of a performer. Uh, oh yeah. You, you it was just weird. weird. Yeah. It was just like, eh. and, and then the background was like, Oh, there's, I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not into that series at all. So maybe it was a big thing. Like, uh, Ryan Turford loves that game. So maybe he was like, Oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. But I was like, it was a long performance and it looked like she was at the Renaissance festival. Is all I'll say. <laughs> just weird. Can't wait to see the behind the scenes like on her TikTok later. That's going to be fun. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, it was probably two out plus hours long, uh, you know, and it was well done. Um, and they had people there, uh, and they showed trailers and then they basically talked about them. That was the big thing about the show. Um, it, it kicked off, you know, I mean, this is weird. Sorry. The trailer I've got looks to be last year's information, not this year's Mark. So oh, yeah. let me get that. So I'm going to pause this. Again. Okay. We're back. Uh, yeah, so uh, now that I've got the right link, folks, um, we're going to talk about what happened at the event. Uh, so very quickly, um, there were some surprises, which I thought was big. This is kind of cool. I, 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 I didn't expect as much new as we got. Typically, Gamescom mm-hmm. is showing things you've already heard before. So we did get Call of Duty Vanguard finally got a, a, a like a campaign trailer. Um, mixed lots of mixed feelings about this game because. I want to support the people that made this game, Mm -hmm. but the company is just, uh, we already talked about the company. So I don't know what to feel because I want the people that made this game, uh, you know, not not to be punished for it and their work to be ignored, but it's like, I don't know how you support these games, quite honestly, at this point. Uh, that's so tough. And I've listened to so many podcasts since, since the last time we talked, cause it was pretty fresh. Um, and it's, it's tough. It's a tough balance. Cause like you said, you want to support, I don't want to say the little people that are making it, but, but you know, just everyone, anyone in the credits, there's so, you know, watch game credits when you finish a game or, or in the menu or whatever. And it goes on for minutes. It's not just a couple of people that suck. It's a whole bunch of people that you hope are awesome and you want to support their work, but also you don't want to support the higher ups that sucks. So it's a, uh, it's a really tough balancing act. And, and part of me is kind of like, you know what? Those people that I want to support already got paid because they're probably paid yep. hourly, you know, instead of getting something off the, off the sales of this game. I'm sure so. they don't get huge bonuses right. for performance. Right. Yeah. Right. So Bobby Kodak kind of does hoping, though. Yeah. But th- exactly. Those people that you want to punish that are letting this kind of behavior go, like they're the people that you will hurt if you don't buy this. So, so part of me is kind of like, you know what? Um, maybe, maybe set some stuff out, but at the same time, it's like, but even people I follow on Twitter are like, I'm so excited. I worked on the music or the sound design or the the level design or this or that for this game. And I'm so excited. And you see this level of excitement. It's like, I hate not wanting to, you know, like I, I follow along with this person. I know what they like on Twitter. I know kind of a little bit of their personality and it's not always just about work, but they're excited about this work. And it's like, this Shit. isn't about the artist this either. Sucks. It's not the artist that it's not the artist that made the problem. And that's the problem. Yeah. The people that made the product are going to suffer because people not play it. They won't get the attributes or the accolades. Um, and the people, if it does well, then, mm-hmm. You know they're still not going to get rewarded for their, their for their work either. Exactly, but but you see the stock price keep dropping, and it's like, okay, maybe people are talking with their wallets. Maybe this is working, and if the stock price keeps dropping, then the shareholders are going to say, "Look, make some changes, do the right thing, fire these people, or or do a systematic change top to bottom." So it's like that holding out the canceling your WoW subscription, doing this kind of stuff is seemingly working. So hopefully the people that are awesome understand that that's a necessary evil, but it's it's just the whole situation sucks and there's no right answer, but I want to support those people who have been hurt and wronged and hope that all of the awesome people that are working hard uh, eventually not only get rewarded, but also have a safe and, and welcoming place to work. And, and those people that suck, um, for lack of a better word, are, are 
get what's coming to them, or I guess it's, it, it's, it just, it's hard to get hyped for these games though. I'll be honest. For yeah. me, it's just, I, it's I will tough. say, I will say though, I think the number one thing you can do, if you still want to play this game, don't buy it until like, until like March, yep. because guess what? That's going to show everyone there that it didn't have the biggest year mm-hmm. stock. The stock market will react to the lack of performance on it when they have their their first quarterly sales get it after because at that point then uh, essentially all the actions that most likely could happen will have taken place so if that's what you want to do you still want to play this game wait yeah. that's the best thing i can say and then play it later and then praise and, people and, and really for me anyway that's what i've been doing with call of duty i've never you know for the last few years yeah. I, I haven't been. I get it from Gamefly. I don't one. buy it. Yeah, I, I pay nothing I, for I these games. I wait for it so. to go yeah. on on that yeah. heavy spring sale that it's like everyone's playing this because I haven't been jumping in the multiplayer. I play the story mode and, and I'm good to go. But um, yep. they're always such an artistic showcase, especially with oh, the new yes. generation of consoles that they look beautiful. That yeah. again, it brings me that that point. It's like I want to support the art that goes into this, but it's like I just. This year, I just feel icky, and there's so much. There's so many other games that it's like Absolutely. it's an easy decision for me. It, Call of Duty is not my favorite. I'm yeah. a multiplayer guy. I can wait to play the four hour campaign. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh well, uh, we did have. Um, I mean, I think the big thing that was so surprising: no Halo at Xbox's event. And what do they do? They bring out Halo for this event, which makes it's just a weird decision. Um, I don't understand it, but you know, maybe they felt like they'd get more viewers at this event where. If you don't love Xbox, mm-hmm. you're at least going to see this, and it might change for me. But yeah. basically, the other part was we got a multiplayer cinematic intro. Still no campaign information. Still no campaign visuals. And this game is launching December 8th. I'm still so confused by this game. I want to hear the story mm-hmm. about what happened to this game. And we we were we got announced that the campaign is delayed. The co-op campaign is delayed, and so is Forge. So this is essentially, you're not getting a full release at launch, mm-hmm. um, which is frustrating. It's disappointing because I really want to play Halo with my friends, yeah. and I'm not a multiplayer guy. So it's it's a weird experience, but um, the, the, the a cinematic intro for multiplayer was really interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I will say that. It was about a, uh, and I don't know if you saw it, Mark, but it was basically this woman, you see her, basically she's trying to avoid the Covenant, She's hiding, and then she essentially gets rescued by uh, Spartans. And then you fast forward and you find out she becomes basically a Spartan, basically like a uh, uh, a drill sergeant cool. training Spartans. Right. So it was a cool experience. And so they're going to have some type of storyline with the the, the the multiplayer. So very cool. But they didn't really even show any gameplay of the multiplayer again, things you hadn't seen. So, mm. uh, But December 8th coming – and with that, they announced a new uh, Elite 2 controller, uh, 200 bucks. Um, looks pretty. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's, a new it's, console. it's a Halo controller. Special edition yes. console, which also looks pretty. With a, with, a, with a controller that's also, it's a standard controller, yeah. but it does have a design. It's it's 550 though. That was what I was trying to like, are they just charging more for paint? I'd say so. Paint and special edition. I mean... Usually you don't pay more for it unless it comes with a game and this game because it's Game Pass. It just it just seemed like a weird thing. It's like paying more. Nintendo doesn't charge more for their special editions, do they? If uh, unless it comes with the game and they charge it for the game. Yeah, usually usually game stuff. But I you're seeing this with with uh controllers for Xbox. I mean, you, yeah. some of the controllers um like I said, even even some of the controllers I've been looking at, so you can get like the standard color controllers that I yep. think Canadian are seventy bucks or seventy five bucks or something like that, um, and it jumps up to like eighty five for um, I think that Horizon one was was eighty five, so uh, like ten dollars. I, mean, I think it's seventy in the U.S. or something yeah. like that, right? But it's it's yeah. Um, yeah, I guess you know if there's more into the if there's more effort put into the hardware then i guess they're gonna they're gonna charge for that and you're getting a special edition controller uh that that may be exclusive to this console i haven't seen anything i think on so that, but yeah. uh so a special edition controller and a special edition like these are gonna sell out like crazy you're gonna see these on the scalper market you probably will already um so i think you know if they can charge a premium for it we've seen well, video games they're, they're, companies doing worse 
Uh, the likelihood that you're going to be able to get one of these easily is probably limited too, because the consoles are hard to find. The big, the big miss is the uh, Xbox expansion cards. Yes. You know, they didn't make one. Right. They have a uh, Seagate like standard hard drive you can buy that's like, but the little chip that looks like Cortana you put in the back, they didn't even do anything with that. Yep. Come on, guys. <laughs> big miss. Swing and a miss. Yeah, I don't know. I, I saw the design of the console. I'm like, it just looks to me it wasn't striking it was just a lot of shapes and it, i'm like i wanted something cooler than that i don't know i, I just it's just to me I, I don't know if there's something iconic about that design that i'm like yep that looks like halo versus it looks thought, like lines i thought it was a very pretty design i i really like okay. it yeah okay well okay <laughs> but yeah uh so halo's december 8th it's coming out with the campaign and multiplayer at launch it's there uh so be ready for that um gamescom uh basically uh, continued with something i was surprised i didn't know what this game was saints row yeah. Mark, is back reboot and it looks very different um which i'm guessing it's time because the original saints row came out on the i think it was a launch title on the original xbox 360 I was gonna say, yeah, that's that's going back, yeah, PS2, PS3, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think at this point, you can't really, re- you can remaster that game, but you know, it's still gonna probably feel clunky a little bit, not so great. Um, this game looked beautiful. I don't know the gameplay. Um, uh, you know, if it's gonna be different or much than Saints Row, but Saints Row has always been that more goofy uh, open world type of game that gta kind of stopped being yeah and gta yeah, kind of took a itself more seriously goofy wacky take on gta so i imagine that the game tr- gameplay i would i would hope is going to be an evolved form of that a more updated form of that and and keep some of the wackiness and because because gta has gotten really far away from that Oh yeah. yeah, but I, yeah, it's I more think of social commentary versus <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think there's there's room for a GTA style gameplay loop with wackier shit happening. Yeah, although it seems like there was a lot of backlash. They're like, man, this game is 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 um, it's kind of neutered. It's not going to have the the crazy weird stuff that the old game did. But mm. I don't think you can do 2005 in 2021. No. You yeah, definitely. Uh, I, you know, yeah, it's it's going to be weird. We already talked about the Call of Duty. Yeah. Basically, that game, though, is going to be a alternate take on World War Two, which I find the concept cool. And I like that. It's a kind of an alternate history because mm-hmm. uh, they've already gone back to World War World War Two a billion times. Um, then we got a surprise and we had heard rumors about this game. There was going to be a turn based uh, XCOM style Marvel game. Mm-hmm. Well, E3 came and went, and we're like, this is going to really happen? Well, Firaxis, the the game, the company that makes those styles of games, is making Marvel's Midnight Suns. The trailer was awesome. Badass. I really thought this looked cool as hell. Yep. It's dealing with the supernatural. Apparently, they did create a new character that is unique, the a Hunter. Marvel hero that's new. Yeah. yeah, very cool. And the characters are, are updated slightly, but I, what I'd say is, they get the feel of the characters right. Like the Ghost Rider uh, character, that's from the comics. That's the modern take on the comic yeah. of the character, yeah, that's, uh, which a lot of people may think, of, oh, that looks horrible. Like that's how he looks in the comics now. And, and that's how he looked in in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't know how many fans yeah. of that show are still out, but it's uh, it, it's not the Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider. This is this is the no. modern Ghost Rider. So it's it's a cool I, – I liked the designs because they, they did a mix. It looks like they have the regular suits – but they also have these kind of, I'm going to say Midnight like Sun mystic- occult mystical suits. Yeah, too. mystically enhanced suits probably for like to give them protection from mm. vampires or something. Yeah. So the the, the yeah. list on this one, uh, Wolverine, Blade, Magic, Ghost Rider, Iron Man, Cap, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Am I missing yep. anyone? And the Hunter, who's uh, the, the customizable protagonist. Um, stopping... Lilith, who is the hunter's mother, I think. Uh, uh, yes, I got that from, right yes. from the trailer. Oh, Captain uh, Marvel two, Captain is Marvel. that Miss Marvel two in Marvel. the back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I just think it looks really cool. I am. I will tell you this: I'm not very good at those styles of games, but I will give it a try. Absolutely. Um, I'm I hope it's this. good. I hope there's like, I hope there's an easy mode because I just want to play it and have fun with it. I don't want to be good at it. Yeah. 
because I'm not. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, we're getting a, a gameplay trailer of this in, in September. So like the first week of September. So we're going to see more of it, how it actually plays. Right. And for Axis, those guys, they don't fail at those type of games. So you'll be happy with it. Yeah. Uh, then games, uh, basically, uh, Horizon Forbidden West finally got a release date. Uh, I liked how they announced this. Basically, the, the one of the head leads, they basically said, you know, we, we are hitting our marks but we do not know what's going to happen with COVID and we do not want to have a bad work environment. So we're coming out February 18th, 2022, which quite honestly, I'm ha- perfectly happy with that date because it gets me out of the holiday season and it gives us room, uh, game room to breathe. Cause the last time forbidden or uh, horizon came out, it was right around the same time as uh, breath of the wild, yeah. <laughs> which took a little bit of its thunder away. So I think this is good because breath of the wild too, if it comes out, Similar to how it did before. Imagine that's not coming out until March. Even if it comes out like March, well, it comes like March third, so like three weeks later. Yeah, it uh, just comes out and drops something in uh, in December, January. Like, hey, PS, you're going to be able to play Breath of the Wild two in three weeks or some crazy shit. That's, yeah, uh, exactly. Just yeah, makes Sony just pull their hair out in clumps. That'll be great. Yeah. Um, one other thing. I mean, and there's some other games. I mean, I just want to hit the, the major highlights. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, Far Cry 6 got more information about that game. I'm in that game. I'm, in, I'm not in that game. I'm in, all in on that game. Um, <laughs> Todd, I yes, didn't that's know not, you were branching out. Oh, you didn't. You, you, Oh, Mark, you know, my 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 work in uh, game acting is yep. is re- renowned for being fantastic. That's not Giancarlo Esposito. That's me actually voicing him. Wow. I was convinced that you played the Honey Badger. So I am very impressed that you got that big of a role. Congrats. You know Honey Badger don't care. That's it. I don't either. <laughs> don't care. I like the, the PG version. I don't care. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's coming out. Can't wait for that. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. This game, Dot Emu. This is really essentially wait. an update to it's 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 an original game, but if you've played the original arcade game, this looks yeah. like a better looking version of that game with a lot more mechanics and also a playable April, April O'Neil. O'Neil. I did see that trailer today as I was looking at the uh, the Marvel uh, Midnight Suns trailer. That one came up, suggested next, and I was like, April O'Neil? Yep, let's go. Yeah, uh, and, and so I had to actually open up another link because this didn't have much more uh, on games you hadn't heard about. So I'm going to go to that, and I, I will surprise you, Mark. Okay. So um, some of the other games uh, we got announced was a game called Cult of the Lamb. Mark, I didn't even know what to think of what's game. It's by Devolver Studios. So it, when I say Cult of the Lamb, what do you think of? Uh, I think of Goat Simulator with more occult stuff close okay so this is like a action uh rpg type of game with like almost like base building but your job you're a lamb and you form a cult (laughs) and you actually have to use your cult to give you powers but sometimes the cult numbers turn on you and you get powered up and then you go out and face monsters but you build a base based on your cult and it's and it's the artwork is beautiful in this game it kind of almost reminds me of castle crashers um in a way it's so weird but it's just like cult of the lamb i'm like okay yeah, you got me. You got me. Um, yeah, entertaining. I'm looking up some. Could just be because you said the mentioned this the the art style. Yeah, I'm looking up some pictures and stuff. This looks uh, quite weird. I'm in. It's it's very weird. Yeah, uh, Super Monkey Ball. This game, Banana Mania. Oh. It's so crazy. Yes. They are having everyone in this game. They've got Beat from uh, Jet Grind Radio. They've got uh, a, a character from Persona Five is in this game now. Morgana is in this game. The, all the mini games, the regular games you can play in this thing. Yep. It's weird. I love Super Monkey Ball. Back on, I want to say GameCube. GameCube, probably. Yeah, yeah. I think so. And then. Uh, even Super, Super Monkey Ball was one of the first games in the iOS App Store way, way back in the day. Like that was one of the first when the App Store first launched because the the iPhone and the iPhone oh, Touch could do motion control the motion or, controls. Yeah. So there was a there was a great version. I thought it was a really good version of uh, of Super Monkey Ball for the and, and back then I didn't even have an iPhone. I just had an iPod Touch. 
Um, but it, it was still really, really good and very responsive and stuff and had a great accelerometer in that and, and a good screen for the time. So, so super monkey ball. Yeah. That's, that's a fun series, man. If you haven't checked that out before, like not like just see it and just kind of be like, ah, monkeys, balls, whatever. I don't know. Um, that's my yep. game, Mark. Monkeys balls. Monkey, <laughs> monkeys balls. That's yes. Uh, yes. Yep. Check it out on my app store, folks. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's coming out. That's going to be fun. It's 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 really reaching into some nostalgia now for people that are a certain age. Yep. The monkey ball is just there, and and they want to play it and share it with their kids. So perfect game when Finn gets a little bit older. I think he like monkey ball. Mm-hmm. Um, then we got something for Charlie. So Charlie, if you're listening. Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga. What a trailer! Holy doki, we got a trailer. Oh, the sad part about this, because the trailer was so good, and this is the only trailer. Like Lauren, kind of paid a little bit of attention for for uh, Midnight Suns or whatever that Marvel game was called. Um, she watched this Star Wars trailer top to bottom. She loves the Lego games. We sat there and we watched it together. And she was like, come on, coming out in like September, October, this fall, because it's been delayed. This game, if you remember, the first trailer for it said 2020, then it was spring 2021, and now it is spring 2022. And it just, it feels like I'm in 12 minutes. It feels like I'm in Groundhog's Day. It just, it's like, it, it just, like it's dangling at the end of this stick and it's like, I'm going to get it. And they just keep moving it to the next year. Like I'm fairly certain that in spring of 2022, they're just going to be like, Oh no, we meant 2023. Didn't you guys get that? Like, Oh no, that's our bad hundred percent spell check error. And, uh, and we'll get this game somewhere around 2065 and and then I'll die. It's, it's actually going to be a, it's going to be a free to play mobile game. Yeah. <laughs> like I just I, uh, a dollar per character, Mark. And there's only three, there's five, only three, 300 350 characters. characters. Yeah, yeah um, exactly. There you go. I am yeah. so excited for this game, though. Like, take the time. It looks like it has. There's a lot of stuff. Lego games are glitchy and not always well built. They're f- usually fun, but sometimes very frustrating. This looks like it wait. Has a so lot I stood in the spot and pushed the button, and it didn't work. What happened? Yeah, a lot of that, the, or, yeah. or or a lot of just like walking through a pat, and then the whole game freezes and makes a no- noise that like only dogs can really understand. And or the level the, wouldn't save, the, or you couldn't get it the level to continue yeah. because you didn't do something. And yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yep. The, those. Yeah. So if they can get rid of those glitches, there looks like there's a lot of moving parts and different mechanics in this game, from vehicles to space combat to lightsaber combat to blaster stuff to a cover system to like a lot of stuff that we haven't seen in Lego games before. That if they need an extra year or an extra two years or an extra six months after the two like whatever if this game comes out next summer next fall sure take your time get this right because this is every movie in the saga i'm sure it's going to factor in the shows and mandalorian and everything else and there's 300 and some characters like get it right just just get it right i was hoping i would have saw at the end of this trailer like um, and play now together with your friends online, but still nothing there. So I hope they added that because I, yeah, they need new mechanics. They need a lot of things because the Lego franchise, it, it's just the, the concept is, is unfortunately the mechanics have gotten so old and stayed that I can't even get excited yeah. about a, uh, cause I'm just tired of doing the same boring kind of gameplay. Yeah. So I'm hoping there's new stuff here and, and they hopefully they deliver on that. And the voice acting was pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it looks like all original voice actors versus any of the actual stars. So that's perfectly fine with which, me. Which, yeah, uh, we, we talked about why that's better. And, and in the past, we've seen Lego games go from everything from like taking audio clips from movies or shows or whatever, which I didn't think worked at all, to getting original. Yeah. And it's always better when they can do original actors either spoofing the original lines, having fun with their own lines or whatever, but it's, it's much more flexible and fits into the Lego style much better. Yeah. Although Harrison Ford said he'd, he'd sign up for this. No, just kidding. He, 
like, yeah, yeah. Anyway. He was going um, to actually. He he apparently broke his ankle and, uh, uh, and and arm walking into the Lego building, and then stepped on a bunch of Legos, which put him out of commission for another year. So he and had then to, he flew off in his Lego plane. Exactly. And crashed. Yeah. He had to, he had to bounce from uh, from doing this. So they got someone that sounds like him, but uh, sadly, yeah, he injured himself way too much walking into the Lego factory to re- to record his lines. So, well, the next time. Very quickly, I'll, I'll go through some of these ones really quick. A game that I just blew me away. I'm like, this is weird and made me think this is really what Pokemon should look like. Mm. And I don't know why Pokemon doesn't spend the money to really up their development and, and what they can do, because by all means, it's the biggest franchise in the world. And I think they spend 10 bucks on their games. But um, it's called Dokev. Very weird game. It's like an uh, it's like an action adventure game that's very much very full of whimsy. But then there's action combat, but you can do everything. It just felt like such a weird game. I definitely check out this game, Mark. It's called Dokev. Okay. D-O-K-E-V. It looks weird and wacky. But it just makes me feel like this is where Pokemon should now look like in in how it could play with uh, the, the in world and the environment uh, versus kind of just staying keeping it safe. So it's called Dokev, folks. Check it out. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just weird, wacky, but it really looked interesting and cool in the art style. Cool, very interesting game. Yeah. Um. Uh, then we got Blood Hunt. It's a it's a, another Vampire the Masquerade game, which I'm like, how many Vampire Masquerade games are there? Because there's like text adventure games yeah. there's bloodlines there's this this game's a action rpg third person shooter coming out on steam on september 7th i've never heard about that and the fact that we aren't hearing about it until now and it's coming out very weird mm-hmm. uh another game that's interesting called bandai's world premiere oh, uh called park beyond this is like theme park simulator but a little bit different and looked very charming and really kind of cool more of a story mode version of that type of uh, game and i thought well this could be very cool uh, coming in 2022. Right. Um, and then I'd say lastly, uh, we had Amazon showing their game called New World. It's an MMO coming out. And I've heard really good things about this game. It's getting an open beta uh, September 12th. Uh, and then it's launching on September 28th. I don't know if it's a fully paid game because it's Amazon, but... I saw it. I'm like, this is pretty impressive. So um, if you're looking for like more of an MMO with supernatural elements, combat, uh, a world that changes as you play, check out New World. Cool. So Mark. Yes, sir. Um, based on all of that, um, I, I've got to say, I was actually pretty impressed from what I saw. Lots of, you know, some new games shown, like the, the Saints Row, which is like, I didn't know that was happening. That's out. The Halo announcements. That's kind of crazy that 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 Gamescom now is feeling like a major show that we can all enjoy. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nice to bring some focus off of E3. Uh we've uh, we we didn't know what we were missing with E3 I think until it left and there were a lot of complaints about like oh it's one week and they have to show everything and people save every blah 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 and it has to go away it has to spread out and then it did spread out through all summer and it was really hard to follow and then E3 came back and we we're like yay but there there's still something still had to change and i think this is a great way to to continue on with that change so if we get gamescom with some big announcements and e3 with some big announcements and the game awards with some big announcements and then little events sprinkled throughout the year then we're starting that it's not focused just on one thing not one event and you can you can kind of spread your your messaging out a little bit and and I think Midnight Suns is a perfect example of that because even back at E3, I remember us talking that that wasn't the right time to launch that game. That wasn't the right time to announce that game because people were still kind of feeling the stink of Avengers and uh, Spider-Man. T- uh, uh, Spider-Man Two was was you know, or, or Miles Morales was. Uh, was was great but if this game wasn't gonna live up to that so i think giving that some time and seeing that now avengers has this big hype around war for wakanda this is a perfect time for this and it's great that there was event kind of centered at around the same time that war for wakanda everyone's everyone's like yeah hyped and then the the for, you know, um the the spider-man trailer for the movie 
uh, is coming out and Shang Chi is coming out and they're doing the what if series. So Marvel hype is huge right now. And it's awesome that if this announcement ha- happened back at E3, people would be like, it's so far out. We're done with Marvel games right now. We're not feeling it. But right now it's like, yeah, this game looks amazing. So it's, it's great to have different events at different times a year so that companies can pace things out based on what's happening in the zeitgeist and what's happening with fans and that kind of stuff. It's, it's really cool. So I love that, that, yeah, this is becoming another event that the, it can be a showcase for new stuff and a, a catch up on like, here's what we announced back in E3. Here's how it's progressing. Get ready to see it either in the fall or when it launches or get ready to learn more in September or at the game awards or whatever. So it's, it's really, really cool. Yeah. It's funny. Cause you mentioned, you know, if they announced the, the, the midnight suns game, then the game they did announce was guardians of the galaxy and people are suspect of that game. Yep. And I mean, and that's the problem. It's like, that's a lot to overcome and I'm excited for that game, but I don't know why. I mean, beyond. I mean, I, I think it looks cool, and I think it's not a it's not a pay to service game. It's it's kind of a it's kind of what we wanted from Avengers. I think initially, so we'll see if it plays out. But yeah, I mean that that created a challenge with that. And yeah, I mean the problem with E three too. A lot of the games that are announced then, we probably didn't have a lot of confidence that a lot of those games announced then, if they said they're coming out this fall, probably were because it's right. like June to whatever is so far away and the world is in a crazy place right now. So the fact is we got a lot of things finally confirmed now that is happening two months away, which is just crazy yeah. like halo and call of duty and, and some of these other things. So it's, 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 it's great. And like you said, I hope we get, we've got uh, the game awards and maybe we'll get something. I mean, we do get some shows and I think packs or something happens in, in the spring. Yeah, uh, exactly. We get the game developers yeah. conference. Some smaller yeah. stuff sprinkled throughout there. But yeah. if there's three or four really big events, like one per quarter or something like that, like I love that. I love that. That's, it, that's really good. Three or four different events throughout the year that are really big showcases that like news sites and like the the actual like news of mainstream media covers uh not just the game sites and then you get the the rest of the stuff throughout the year that that we follow and and follow closely right so it's uh it's exciting i i love that it's it's just growing and we needed some good news yeah we, the year's been crazy we just need something to get hyped about and just get excited about so you know what We'll take this any day. So, and it's the Germans, and we saw the 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 one German lady was a surprise to me as well. That's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she kind of looked like the uh, no she kind of looked like the lady from uh, Resident Evil. A lot of people said, which is kind of like, yep, I bet that was the model they used <laughs> for her. But uh, on that note, uh, Mark, we talked about managing expect- expectations in the hype machine, which is our topic this week. Um, I, I think people had a lot of undue expectations for the Xbox part of that show, but the expectations for Gamescom, I think, were exact opposite. Mm-hmm. I don't think people expected a lot. Um, and I think we felt like that is all about gaming in a while. It seems like we put so much hype on what somebody's going to bring out a year or somebody's winning something and then they don't. And then we we have to then defend if we had a position, then we have to defend it. And, and it becomes kind of like fanboyish. And ultimately I don't think it really helps anything. When was the last time being hyped for something really paid out and said, yep, I was hyped and I was right versus I was, my my expectations were lower and they actually got really, they were even lower than that. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? Like, cause you want people to get hyped. You want people to be excited about what's happening and it's fun to be, to be hyped about stuff, whether it's, it's on Twitter or in a discord or Facebook or whatever. Uh, it's, it's fun to find that community too, and be all hyped together about something. And of course, when we get, uh, two minute trailer or five minute gameplay bit or, and it happens with movies too. It doesn't really matter. Um, and you see this kind of stuff and you start to theorize based on what you see or a tiny little, uh, clip of something. And it's obviously, you know, it starts to snowball because 
communication between like-minded people is so easy that when we don't get a flood of information or enough information to properly temper our expectations, then of course, we're just going to fly off the handle and we're going to come up with a whole bunch of stuff. So that was one of these things with uh, the the Spider-Man movie trailer that we just saw was <laughs> I saw a bunch of memes floating around that were like, you know, I hope Spider-Man No Way Home co- meets my expectations. And, was, you know, and then it cuts to like the expectation. It's like 27 different versions of Spider-Man and yeah, all these other characters from like comic books and, and like, you know, media and whatever else. And it's like, they're they're impossible expectations. But uh, even though that's a joke, it does like some people actually believe that kind of stuff. And, you know, civil war in the MCU was one of my favorite movies. But if you expected that to be civil war from the comics, where it's basically just two groups of 200 super powered individuals going head to head and it, in it, this epic world changing battle, like if those were your expectations going into the civil war movie, like damn straight, you were going to be disappointed. But like, if you just watch that movie for what it was and enjoyed it, then it's like I said, one of my favorite marvel movies and and yeah like the airport fight was badass but it wasn't 200 super powered individuals beating the snot out of each other like it was a dozen uh so i think it's it's very easy to go off on that though but i think i think companies nowadays have to get ahead of that i think that they have to get better at understanding that the world now talk we all talk to one another there are like i said discord groups also join our discord group um but there, there are these where we type, hype up things yeah, yeah. we unre- unrealistically hype up things yeah exactly but yeah. but like we, we all talk we 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 come up with things so if they show a trailer or a couple of images or there's god forbid leaked set photos or rumors or whatever like get ahead of it don't be afraid to be like Uh, you guys are kind of going off the rails. Here's what's happening. And like, of course you're going to get those conspiracy theory people that put on their tinfoil Mm -hmm. hats and they're like, nah, this is some fake news. They're actually going to, they're, they're saying that this is exactly what we're getting, but we're getting this. And it's like, okay, well that person aside, like I think if, if companies are a little bit more upfront, then, then you don't, you don't get that spin out, but they have to get ahead of that. Whether it's just someone releasing a press release, it doesn't always have to be a trailer or a, an in-depth kind of thing. It can be someone that is doing a, a press release saying like, look, here's, here's the details of this game or this event or this thing. Here is what we're going to be showing. And, and like you said, the, the Xbox was like, we're going to be showing things that you already know. And people were like, no, they're not we're going to get this, 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 and this. And it's like, it's, it's hard to combat that because like I just said, like even, even when people are completely upfront, sometimes it backfires. But um, I, I also think like a lot of times the companies set themselves up for that. Like they, they've said that in the past and it's a boy who cried wolf situation. So I think mm-hmm. companies need to be, transparent with things, but they also need to stick with that transparency. Because uh, again, if, if you give people an inch, they're going to take a mile. So give them an inch, tell them you're going to give them an inch, deliver that inch. And eventually you'll kind of teach those people that they, they should expect what you're telling them kind of, thing. <laughs> you know, temper your expectations basically. And it's funny. I mean, to pair that with just, you know, another industry, the Apple one more thing. Yeah. That is actually part of their business model yeah. to use that method to surprise. Yeah. That's why they take anything getting spoiled very seriously and sue people. Um, and, and I'll give you another expectation, uh, a, a situation, Mark, where unrealistic expectations. So uh, in your mind, imagine a young Todd uh, who was a huge Pearl Jam fan back in the day. And at the time, Pearl Jam, this is like in the the 90s, Pearl Jam was known to show up and just 
be at concerts with people they like performing with. Mm-hmm. Gil Young was one of those people. So for some reason, my buddy talked me into going to a Neil Young concert with Blind Melon. Um, was Todd a big fan of either of those bands? No. But for some reason, Todd got in his mind, Pearl Jam's going to show up. I know they will. Didn't show up. Oh, no. I have no one to blame but myself, right. and that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is a situation where past experience leads you to expect certain things regardless of if there's even anything found of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I said, the Apple model is one of those. Um, other companies where they said, oh, we're not going to do anything, and then they do it. So then it's like, well, I can't trust you mm-hmm. because you said that, and then you did the opposite. So I think that becomes a – I don't know if we can expect anything – and and not be underwhelmed or overwhelmed or whatever. Nintendo was very common for that too, you know, with Nintendo Directs. Mm-hmm. They they have set the standard to be the one that this Direct is going to be the big thing every year. This is going to be the biggest thing. And when they don't deliver the next big Zelda game you didn't know about, it becomes kind of disappointing because mm-hmm. Nintendo kind of underwhelms a lot of times in regards to their announcements. They're very conservative. They they typically try to hold back on things and they try not to release things too early. Um, and then when they do, they get nailed for it. The Metroid, what, the Metroid Prime 4 logo? And, and I, they got nailed for I, it? I think yeah. it's fine to hope for things. I think that's part of the fun of like, you know, Nintendo's having a big e3 showcase oh wow what's going to be shown there and it's like the first one in three years yeah, oh my god right? what could they do could, and the last time your, they did it we got breath of the wild too and that's it you <laughs> can get your hypes uh your, your your hopes as hyped up as you want to and and hope for things and that's that's a different thing than expecting something is hoping yeah. for something so you could hope for x y and z but like it's it's very different than when they say, hey, we're going to do a 15 minute indie game showcase. And then you go online and you see these people that are like, oh, where's Hollow Knight? Where's Hollow Knight, Mark? It's not even that. It's like, <laughs> oh, no, this is where they're doing the Metroid Prime yeah, 4 reveal. Exactly. Like, this is yeah, where we're going to game, yeah. gameplay. And it's like, did you not see where they said it's a 15 minute indie direct? Like, sure. If they say like we have a game announcement direct that's going to be 40 minutes of upcoming games hope a hundred percent hope that metroid or wave race or whatever you want is going to be one of those but when they say it's a 20 minute indie direct like don't don't go in expecting them to be like oh and one more thing here's an unreleased game that's the best game you've ever seen it's It's our biggest franchise plus f-zero plus rabbits plus wave race plus pilot wings all in one game it's fantastic um and we're giving it away for free so like it's you know like it, it's that kind of stuff so this hope versus expectation and, and i think we need never let go of that hope but like maybe start tempering your expectations yeah it's, it's funny i think i think i remember one nintendo direct where they said they they were like even were like it's going to be things releasing in 2021 and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, and they still did things that weren't releasing in 2021, which I thought was hilarious. I mean, come on, guys. I'm like, Nintendo, don't you learn that you're going to get 85 million unlikes on YouTube because people are mad because Metroid Prime 4 is still not coming out when you haven't announced it. So I don't know. I, I mean, but being an enthusiast like we are, we, we we kind of are spoiled with so much and 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 we know what's coming so we're the ones that are hard to impress to a large extent and i think those special moments that just blow you away are the ones that make you always think there's always a chance right yeah. and to lose that hope for something truly wow is what we live for, mm-hmm. I, I think, to a certain extent. It's that thing that makes you so excited. Um, it's kind of like, the, what was it, the Disney event last year. Remember, was it the uh, the Disney Plus event that was like in December? Mm-hmm. That just unexpectedly, we found out like, oh my God, there's going to be all these Star Wars shows. Yeah. And there's going to be this and that. And it was like, and it's like nobody expected that. But guess what? They're going to have another event this year, Mark. And guess what did they do? They set the precedent yeah. where people are going to be like, okay, I wasn't showing up at that event, but I'm going to watch it this year. So it's it's almost like the precedent they set mm-hmm. 
regardless of what they say, will always remind us of that nostalgia for that that one moment in time. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, and you know, I grew up in an era when before internet, before all those things. So, um, I, I didn't I didn't have those expectations, um, and now that is just part of reality. You know, you, you get spoiled on things, Twitter, all these things. So, um, I I don't know if we can ever get back to a more innocent place, but I don't know. I'm perfectly fine. It's it's tough. I mean, and it's, it's like sports or anything else. I mean, my, my dad's a diehard Maple Leafs fan. Uh, and, and they haven't won a Stanley cup since, whatever 1960 or some shit like it's it's just but like every single year he's like this is the year and he watches the Leafs expecting them to win and it's like dude temper your expectations (laughs) but like you know you can't give up on that hope because that's your passion right like we're we're doing this we're talking about this and we we talk to to like-minded people that that have that same kind of hope and I, I don't like I said I don't want to lose that hope but setting your expectations properly, I think, is is healthier for your your own mental well being. Oh, absolutely! But it's less fun, Mark. <laughs> Sometimes I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure disappointments, a, a salty. Yeah, uh, disappointments, a salty uh, dinner we all eat every once in a while. But you know yeah. what? We, we live for those those shining moments, and uh, they rarely come. But you know what? Enjoy them while they can. But but don't lash out about companies when they never promised you a rose garden. Yes. That's it. Behave. <laughs> it's a song. It's a song. I never promised you a rose garden. Look it up, kids. It's an old song. Oh, well. Well, Mark, I think that is it this week. But you know what, um, guys, if if you have thoughts on expectations or what we talked about with Gamescom or the games we played, um, you know, we want to hear uh, about that from you. And you'll hear about that in the end credits. So, Mark... Thank you for joining me today. I hope you had a good time. Yeah. Um, I kept you up late. It's all right. But you know what? I hope you had a good time. Yeah. And I hope your expectations always. were met. Always. Always with you, Todd. Exceed my expectations. Well, thank you for that. And you did as well, Mark. Well, everyone, thank you for joining on this journey through the world of video games and what we've been playing and the news that we all love. Uh, until next time, just remember, it's always better to game together. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server, or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite. Thanks for listening.